Hey up for Racing DP here, otherwise known as Dave. And this is a video for, for Paul from Blue Badge Racing. And hopefully I've picked the right car here. Now I'm gonna start off with quickly showing you um, what wheel settings I've got on my wheel. Um, my base settings and the car settings. There is two different lots. Okay, so if we go into options, options and help, go into controls. Now in here, you do need to calibrate your wheel, your pedals and your force feedback. Now, once you have done all that, uh, you need to go to configuration. Now for the T300, these are the settings that I have gone for. So feel free to match these settings force feedback being on 100 now with the t80 i don't know what it's going to be like for you um, but for the t300 i find this to be a very decent setting okay then if we go to the actual car go to edit current setup and r1 to go into force feedback okay copy these settings for this car only um, because these settings are for each individual car. So put these settings on the Caterham 7 Classic and it should make it feel better. But again, with you being on a T80, I don't know what effect it's going to have because the T300 is a very different monster. But this definitely, I find this to be very good on the T300. So put these settings on for the spindle. Then press R2, body and SOP. I may cover this again uh, later in the video. Uh, but yeah, match up these settings for uh, this car. Once you have put it on, save it to every single track do that before before you put any settings actually the car set up on because that way regardless of what track you go to you will have these force feedback settings on the car uh, and it makes a massive massive difference okay let's get on to the uh, the main video stuff so that those settings are on the car. Now I have done a few laps in this car already um, and I've not touched the actual car setup. What I found was it take it's taken around four or about four laps to get the tires up to temperature. Now when the tires are cold the car's fun to drive but when the rears get up to temperature and the fronts are still cold it's horrible so that transitional period is not very nice at all. Once the fronts do get warmed up, the car's not too bad. Um, but personally, I think I would have to do a bit on the setup. Now for the getting the tires to come into temperature quickly and get to a more level temperature, we'll adjust the tire pressure. For the brake pressure, I am finding that the brakes are a little bit locky uppy. Um, so I'm probably gonna reduce the brake pressure we can't do anything with downforce weight or anything like that the steering ratio we could change but i'm not going to i'm going to leave it as it is now with the caster and camber and all that kind of stuff there's only one thing we can change and that's the front towing angle that's basically how much the front wheels point at each other now i haven't adjusted that yet because um, i'm going to go and do another run um, with not adjusting the settings Okay, in the suspension, the only things we can adjust are the spring rates, uh, but I will have a look at those and a play about with those and see how it feels. Uh, but obviously, you want the car to be realistic, not necessarily best handling for me. And although getting it realistic could be difficult because I've never driven one of these, but we'll see how we get on. Okay, now there isn't much else we can change there. We can adjust the gears, um, which... I could do for the tracks uh, and if you want me to I will um, but if you can't really adjust the gearing uh, in the car you're going to use then ideally if possible we could find out what its top speed is and then I could work backwards from that um, okay the fuel load I've left it maxed out with fuel um, because if this is a car that you're going to go taking long for longish races then you're going to want the fuel in also if we can get the car handling nice with heavy fuel then I'd like to think when we take the fuel out it'll handle even better okay so I'm actually going to go and do a few laps now I'm not going to continue on the, the video from this point doing the laps because it, like I say it takes about 4 laps to get the tyres warmed up and I've only got 15 minutes on this clip so I'm going to stop the video 
and then I will enter a lap when the tyres are warm um, and then we'll make some changes and see how we get on okay if you have a look up in the top right corner you'll see that I've now done six laps I'm on the seventh and if you look in the bottom right corner you'll see that the front right tyre is still cold so I've definitely got a problem with that and um, the temperature's not getting up so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do one lap here because I don't think I'm going to get it any higher in temperature and then I'm going to uh, disappear off play about with the setup try and get a nice setup on the car and then I shall uh, add on to this video that setup with a uh, possibly a cold tyre lap and a hot tyre lap but if the time isn't there or if there isn't enough allowed space because you can only do 15 minute clips when recording on ps4 i shall just do the warm tire one Personally, on a race track, I don't really want that. So, the setup that I'm probably going to go with is probably going to try and dial that out a little bit. Although it is good fun. I mean, these cars are ta a little tail happy because the rear-wheel drive cars. Is dabbing the brake. Not a perfectly clean lap. I mean, if you look at lap six, I did a very good lap there. Um, but the car, I mean, it doesn't handle too badly once the tyres have warmed up a bit. But still, the right front tyre hasn't got up to temperature. Okay, so. I have played about with the setup now, I've done a fair few laps uh, and in a moment I'll show you a, a warm tyre lap. Now what I've done is I've played about a lot with the the tyre pressures. Now the tyre pressures are very much going to be track dependent um, but as you'll see that none of them are the same and that is because of, oh, excuse me, because of the nature of the track and the corners different tyres are getting different amounts of Pre um, like pressure put on them from the road and the car so the different tyre pressures I've got here are to help balance out the tyre pressures now with the brake pressure earlier on I did actually lower it because the car was locking up quite a bit but I've actually now gone the other way I've increased it to 96% the reason for that is that around here I noticed the reason the brakes were locking up was because they were getting cold um, now around Monaco they never really actually get really hot because surprisingly you don't actually use the brakes a lot around here um, but I so I went a little higher on the brake pressure so that it is trying to put more temperature into the brakes every time you do use them I didn't touch the brake balance obviously can't touch anything there I haven't touched the steering ratio but what I have done is I've altered the front toe angle it was on a standard on 0.9 degrees I've put it down to 0.6 and the reason for this is that the car's quite slidey it's very oversteery and I enjoy that it's fun to drive but it's not necessarily the fastest way around the track so what I've done is I've reduced the front toe angle and basically because we haven't got a lot of settings that we can change basically what's happening is the front of the car is very responsive and because of that the rear end is sliding out now reducing the toe angle on the front reduces that responsiveness on the front 
which then means the rear end doesn't kick out as much. The car is perfectly drivable and much easier on the wheel to use, uh, much less steering lock required, uh, especially if you do get into little oversteer moments. Now the spring rates, I haven't adjusted these um, because the car actually feels quite nice and obviously Monaco is probably not a track you're going to take your car around but so other tracks I may have a look at that. Right, the bump stops again, I haven't adjusted these because that's more to do with ride height. If we were bottoming out then I would in adjust the bump stops but we're not. I mean I would love to be able to drop the ride height on this car can't adjust any of those and the gears as I said early on I'm not going to adjust the gears um, because I don't know what gear ratios your car can get to um, but obviously if you are able to adjust your gears or if mainly for your gameplay adjusting your gear ratio will help be helpful but when it jumps this much that now means first and second do the same speed so it's not that helpful but around here you can actually get away with not using first so you could essentially knock them all down one and use fifth gear which we hadn't been doing yet but you probably only get to the same speed um, but it all depends on how comfortable you are with it but we'll, we'll look at that more on other tracks and once uh, I have an idea of what sort of speed your car can do so anyway right let's go and do um, a warm tyre lap okay so we'll try and get a lap in. I'm not going to talk too much just so that I can concentrate on the lap to be oh big lock up Okay, so I'm a tenth off my fastest lap, but as you'll notice, my fastest laps are now into the 203s. The car is handling much better with those changes that I've made. But like I say, what I haven't done is a mega long stint uh, on this uh, setup around this track to see if the tyres do just keep going up and going up and going up in temperature. What I've noticed so far, if they get above sort of 200, they do start to get a little bit slidey. The car's perfectly drivable when it's slidey, you just need to know that it's happening. Right, okay, so there we are. There's the setup then around Monaco. Now, as I said at the start, I've done Monaco just so that I can get very, very tight corners, uh, some fast corners, and it's a tricky track. And just to show you that this car, it can get around this track quite nicely and trying to get it into um, less oversteer although I do enjoy that but what I will do now um, 
uh, it is I'll actually save this setup to all of the tracks on the game so I can then go places like Donington and so on um, and work on the setups from there see how this setup works on there and then work on those as well